And there we go. It says we are live. We're recording. I'm going to turn off and show in my uh, transcript there. So welcome, everybody. Our two hosts welcome. today and your... Want to introduce yourself? Yeah, certainly. My name's Chad Stout. Uh, I'm a Microsoft Copilot Technical Specialist. And I'm Mike Giannotti. I'm a uh, Principal Technology Specialist. I don't know. I guess we are showing. It showed two people, then it stopped. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to watch my uh, stream, the settings, the health, the analytics. Um, trying to see if it, it looks like we're streaming. But... Uh, yeah, we'll see. We're rec at least we're recording it for on demand afterwards. So, uh, welcome. This is the inaugural kickoff of Candidly Copilot. Uh, Chad and myself are going to be doing this weekly, and the goal is to, in a very short, condensed time frame, thirty minutes, get you three things about any given topic on Copilot. Um, and actually, I'm going to flash up real quickly uh, the agenda. Let me. Do that. We'll go past the welcome. We can come back to that. So, whoop, that's not what I wanted. Go previous and previous. There we go. So, we'll be talking about first the show, you know, the format of the show. Then, we'll uh, be talking about having an open QA where the audience, you can ask any kind of questions that you'd like. Um, we'll be wide open for that and things that you would like to see us cover. That's, you know, of particular importance. Um, we're going to have a prompt of the week. Each week we'll present you a prompt of the week. Then we're going to wrap it up. Along the way, we're going to have guests and other folks. Um, but really the meat of this is going to focus around this three things that we'll get into in just a moment that we're going to be uh, presenting. It's going to be kind of the format of the show. But in the meantime, I'm going to come on back to us. And this is our first episode, so I know I'm going to be a little rough there. Whoops. And I didn't. There we go. Um, talk about uh, just a few things about the weekend. So, Chad, before we get into the meet of today, you done anything interesting this past week or weekend or recently? Yeah, not, nothing too exciting this weekend. Uh, I, I live out here in Utah. I'm about 6,000 feet, 6,200 feet up in the mountains. And so fall is definitely here. Uh, thankfully the weather's kind of held on for us and, uh, it was lovely, uh, fall weather here in this, here, here in Utah, right around the seventies, uh, played nine holes of golf. That's probably the most exciting thing. Uh, I didn't break anything. So, uh, I think I made it out of the weekend. Okay. Very cool. Nice. How about you, Mike? What'd you do? What did I do? Uh, <laughs> I uh, I mowed the lawn, <laughs> sat on my my tractor, which, um, and uh, yeah, sat on the tractor, mowed. Getting I got everything ready because today at some point they're supposedly coming and they're supposed to uh, aerate everything. And I have a couple acres, so when I say wow. my lawn, it's not like I got a little thing. I have acreage, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so they're supposed to come and aerate all that and seed and you know so it's right the time of year so we did that we went out for dinner we, there's a local irish pub uh that we like to go to and uh we went in there just for you know uh my wife tracy and myself just to enjoy ourselves had myself a guinness nice. always love to pull a pint pull a pint <laughs> lad and uh yeah that was about it uh you know and hanging out that's good so you know, uh, we have three things. We have this format that we said we want to cover each and every week. And so do uh, you want to kind of kick it off explaining what we mean by three things? Yeah, thanks, Mike. I think, um, you know, we're seeing this at customers and it, it's become kind of a, a methodology for most, um, especially not not exclusively to Copilot, um, but to, to tech, to technology in general. Um, but with the customers I, I work with, they're very large. Um, they're global customers. Um, and at times, right, um, trying to take one big bite is, is seemingly difficult. So we kind of have, in my discussions with customers, right, we're, we're 
in this agreement around crawl, walk, run, right? And with regards to, to co-pilot, right, we think of crawl, walk, run um, in, in very specific ways, right? So if, if I'm considering a, a crawl approach, right, it's, it's really around implementing foundational personal productivity boosters, things like Microsoft Copilot, Microsoft Copilot with EDP, Enterprise Data Protection, and Copilot for M365. Walking, walking is a little bit more difficult, mm -hmm. requires a little bit more de dexterity. Um, and right, examples of that are purpose-built copilots, sales service, finance, HR, things like Microsoft Graph Connectors, SharePoint Copilot Agents, and Copilot Studio Agents. And then of course, right, when we get to the point where we can run, that's the fun part. Um, we're really talking about advanced transformative co-pilots and agents. These are organizationally transformative using things like Azure OpenAI. Very cool. So, you know, I, when I think of, I think of talking to customers all the time and I agree with you, this is something that we, it's come become really a best practice. And I think so often we see customers, they go out now, excuse me if I was distracted, we're still working out a lot of our technical stuff here. <laughs> just trying to make sure that we're broadcasting. It looks like we are. Um, and, uh, but if I go, actually, I'm going to let that play. There we go. Um, I'm going to let it play to see, make sure that it's running through the sequence. But when we talk with customers so often, and Copilot is one of them, I actually heard this directly from a uh, C level the other day at a customer site, um, and I had to kind of push back. And um, oh, it says having trouble loading the event. We may be just doing an on-demand recording. All right, I'm not going to worry about it. So, with uh, when I was talking with him, though, the thing that he said was, you know, this should be something we just throw out there, and it just people just use it, and it just works, kind of like you know a phone. You give it to them, they'll figure it out. And I was like, well, you know, the difference is people get a phone for personal use, right? It's something that they they have to use for communicating. So first of all, they have to figure out, you know, on their phone, how do I dial a number? Which would be crawling. Right. <laughs> Baseline right, right. functionality. I need to call somebody. Then they're going to get into more extensive communications like text and maybe you know, or taking a picture. Now that's kind of qual. We're now walking. We're doing a multitude of things. We're calling people. We're sending messages. We're capturing images and videos. And now I want to get more advanced, and I want to start to share that out on the internet in social media platforms. I got to download apps. Blah, blah. Now we're running. Yeah. And I said that doesn't happen overnight. No, and if they it switch does platforms. They got to go back to the beginning. I said that none of that happens and it didn't happen overnight. That's right. Um, Great example. So, you know, this idea of crawl, walk, run. AI is, you know, in its infancy and you need to be purposeful in how you're engaging with it and how you're prompting it, the prompts you're giving and the, the language around those prompts and different things. And people... You know, with that phone, you did it because you had to do baseline stuff because people expect you to call and call back and yeah, turn yeah. calls. At work, you're already in a mode of learned behavior and repetition. And we're not pulling that away. You're giving this. And while it's going to help people, people are still creatures of habit until they're either helped out of that and, and nurtured along the way to see the benefits or if it's disruptive, like, okay, the 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 rotary dial, like I used to have, is done dead. <laughs> Here's a smartphone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if I think about your example, um, you know, it's taken decades uh, for us to make a transition from right landline phones to mobile phones, right? That literally only did, had a dial pad. Um, yeah. To you know, more smartphones. Um, and that's taken, you know, roughly 30, 40 years to, to occur. That's not to say that um, generative AI 
um, is, is going to take that amount of time. I, I, you know, we're seeing it, Mike. Um, and of, of, of course, you know, to the point of the CEO, you, 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 you were discussing earlier, you can throw it out there, right? We've had customers mm-hmm. throw it out there. The issue is I think, right. If you throw it out there, that's got a longer tail, right? You need to be, um, purposeful, right. In your, your thoughts around adopting a technology like generative AI, because quite frankly, you want to be ahead of your competitors, right? You want those mm-hmm. productivity gains. You want those, those, uh, transformative innovations to take pl- place sooner rather than later. Right. And in anything we do, regardless if it's tech, tech or not planning, right. Helps us get there faster. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it, you know, the one thing, and I always, I bring it up a lot with, with customers, I, although it's starting to become an old <laughs> kind of, you know, little t- tale I like to tell. Um, but, you know, it really brings home the point of, of st- and I always tell people, I always ask, have you seen the movie, What About Bob? And I do have to admit that those hands raised are becoming less and less. <laughs> <laughs> as we're having a younger, younger generation. But what about Bob? It was a movie a number of years ago with Bill Murray and uh, Richard Dreyfus. And in that movie, Richard Dreyfus is a psychiatrist or psychologist or psychiatrist. And he is Bob's therapist. And Bob can't leave his house. Um, he has these immense fears and everything. And he's uh, can't do anything. And so... Dreyfus is going to go on vacation, and which makes Bob freak out. And uh, Richard Dreyfus tells him, "Well, Bob, which is Bill Murray, you know, just take baby steps. You can baby step to any. Don't try to get you know all the way to the store down the street. Take steps outside the your door, then take steps to your hallway." down your hallway, then take them down the stairs. And this idea. And so Bob puts his goldfish in a little mini goldfish bowl with a rope around (laughs) it, around his neck. Right. And he's like, I have to talk to Richard Dreyfus, the therapist who is now, you know, out on vacation with his family on a lake and many, many, many miles away. And Bob baby steps his way just by getting the first start outside the door. And down, and eventually, Bob is water skiing. Bob is doing all kinds of crazy adventures. And uh, but it's this idea that take things in bite size, crawl before your that idea again. You don't. Nobody just gets up and walks as a baby. You crawl first. You get a sense of things. You get comfortable. Then you start standing up and falling down. Standing up and <laughs> falling down. Then soon. You're starting to do the baby kind of, you know, oh, look at it. And the baby careening and then plops over. And then finally, as you get older, then the kids are running everywhere. And that's all they do. Um, <laughs> but it's the same, you know, when we're talking about co-pilot. And the idea is that in this podcast, what we would like to do is to take a crawl, walk, run approach. Where each topic, we're going to have a different topic every week. And we'd love to, again, get suggestions from our audience. Um, If you're watching this on our blog, go ahead down in the comments below and leave your suggestions for topics with Copilot you'd like covered. But we're going to categorize them and let you know, hey, this is a crawl step. This is something you should be doing up front in its infancy. And then now here's a walk. And we're actually going to do our next, uh, next episode is before you crawl even getting your data but then we're going to go crawl walk and a run three in a row and then we're going to continue to iterate yep so and we might iterate three steps crawl walk run on a single topic if you have a good one that you'd like us to cover like how do i foundationally and the idea is that everybody should be able to get this um but whether it's IT, how do I get, how do I manage this? Whether it's governance around it, whether it's end user enablement, uh, business enablement and empowerment, 
That's the approach that we're going to take. And we'll label them. We're going to keep them very clear. That way, you know, instead of saying 100, 300, 400, I never know what those mean. Half the time when people say yeah. 200, I'm like, I'm lost. <laughs> so <laughs> crawl, walk, run, right? Keep it simple. Three levels. Yep. Yeah, pretty simple. I think it's a simple approach. It's easy to digest. I think our customers appreciate it, at least the customers I talk to appreciate it because it can be tailored to any audience as you mentioned mike right like even around organizational planning like what are the three objectives we're going to accomplish this year around generative ai when you're talking to the c-suite and leadership executives um you know it's all around right trying to to reach for and achieve right organizational objectives and um i think you know, regardless of the conversation you're having from the top, uh, from the top to the bottom in, in many mm-hmm. ways, right? You can, you can overlay, right? This approach to um, making those types of decisions and then right being successful at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. So I know we don't have any, we have nobody on because evidently there's some issue <laughs> on the LinkedIn side, it, it, it continues to not uh, load. Um, and, I, and it gives me a thought, too. And maybe this is something we talk, just talked through right here. For the audience, again, in, your con- in the comments, please let us know. But uh, maybe we just do a Teams meeting and set the stuff, you know, audio and video off for attendees, right? Have us as the uh, presenters and turn on, um, uh, not chat, um, Q and A. That's what sure. <laughs> my brain was yeah. needed to catch up. But turn that on. Maybe we just do it that way. Just run these as teams meetings, so we can uh, lessen the complexity of this. Yeah, I, don't know. I think. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think I'm open to that as well. Um, I think right, if we can minimize um, minimize the hops, right in the route, yeah. then uh, yeah, then maybe. Maybe we'll have more success from a technical perspective. You know, Mike, I know we we don't have anybody on for Q&A, but, um, uh, you know, maybe we can just ask each other a couple questions um, to kind of k- kick it off in the spirit of Q&A um, and, yeah. and to fill that time a little bit. Um, we've got some airspace here. So, um, you know, I know we both work for the larger, more strategic customers, um, many mm-hmm. of which were part of the EAP program. Um, early access program. Um, yeah. I had many successes, right? But I also had um, some customers that just kind of turned it on, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, which created a whole flurry of um, discussions and educational sessions and what have you. Um, I have some customers that are outrageously successful, and and they are, you know, in my mind, probably anywhere from nine to twelve months ahead of the rest. Um, what, what has your experience been with your book of customers and do you have one that kind of stands out with regards to, you know, how, how successful they've been with their deployment yeah, so of, of Microsoft I, Copilot? Yeah, I can't say names, right? obviously we're out here, <laughs> but, um, having said that, no, so first of all, just to backtrack on what you've said in the beginning of that where we had some that just turned, I had a, a number of them just turn it on. We, we don't need your help, Microsoft. We, you know, we'll, we'll let you know if we need anything. So, and they did it, number one, they did it small. Um, and, you know, they had a very limited audience. They tended to keep it in IT. Um, and a couple of problems around that, and then I'll hit this successful. But problems I saw were, Number one, keeping it in IT, and you and I are IT. So when I say this, I'm lo- I'm saying it with love, IT, uh, <laughs> because I've been there too. Love right? and compassion. <laughs> love and compassion. I, I do understand, and I used to get the twitchy eye when people would do things. Um, but oftentimes with IT, and I actually was in a meeting the other day where an IT champion had us in a meeting, and they wanted to give their take on stuff to business users and they started, well, I, I, I find that this feature is 
it's cheesy. I wouldn't use that. And and I'm thinking, really, because I showed it to some executives of yours without you, and they were like, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. And then they tried it, and then they really liked it. Because somebody, and I, te- I find that in IT, we tend to have very strong biases about the things we like and we don't like. And we tend to discount that for everybody instead of saying, hey, this is me. This is what I like, but you may be different. Like for me, my biggest things are I use it. I use it in Word probably two or three times a day. I use every time with meetings, the meeting uh, analysis. And then after that, it would be PowerPoint. And uh, then, you know, I can go on down the list from there. But those are for me. But for others, it could be something totally different. So I think the mistake in just having IT rather than actual business users, especially with this first wave, the first and now even second wave of Copilot for 365, because it really is targeting end users. It's not targeting IT. Like the Excel is a great example. Excel for power users has been, they're like, meh. But I show, you know, doing, uh, hey, summarize the data and get your charts and graphs to people who never use it and have to once in a while. And they're like, (gasps) you know, totally different audience. So that's the first thing. The audience, you need to have it with the business user and across representation. Um, and enough of a sampling for that. So that means you're going to have, you know, you're know, you not going to have 20, 30 people. I'm sorry, that's not a pilot. You're going to have <laughs> several hundred to uh, several thousand. So that's the, the first thing. Um, the other is just putting it out. People, their head's down in their work. And no change is good. It's good change, right? If I've got everything down. And so unless... You are spending, you know, a very measured and proactive. You're going to have troubles, which brings me then to the companies who did well. So I've had a couple of companies. Um, two of them have tens of thousands of licenses. Just say that. Um, and that's awesome. Where where they've really shined is they've been very intentional, not just in piloting, but in supporting users having regular sessions, how-tos, demonstrating to ones. I had one of them, uh, one of the uh, guys who was helping facilitate, he said, oh, we got a shared OneNote. I said, a shared OneNote, what are you you doing that? We're gathering all the prompts and we have a a page, different page in the notebook uh, per application where we're capturing all the prompts for reuse. And I was like, dude, that's freaking awesome, right? Because they were getting the stuff and then making it real. But they were spending their every week. They had open office hours to go through, to show how to do things, answer people's questions. They were also using one of my favorite apps, Forms, to actually poll the people weekly. Yeah. So they were doing weekly polling. And so when we had like a meeting near the end of their EAP piece, he was able to, they were able to go down through the numbers. They had all the, you know, how people felt, how it had been affecting, because uh, they were continually compiling the results around all that. And so they understood what was where the strengths were, where, you know, where they should be targeting, where they were lacking in their support and doing things, and just very proactive and measured. And they took that crawl, walk, run helping yeah. people with baseline activities and building on that, right? I, and that's, I find, I, I, that's yeah. the, what I see. Yeah, and Mike, I find that more so than any other tech that I've ever supported in my 25 plus years of being IT, um, mm-hmm. the communal educational aspect of this is huge and should not be overlooked, yeah. right? Like people no. really get into this and people like to share what has, you know, helped them be more successful from an individual contributor perspective, right? Like I, yep. there are co-pilots, right? That will help IT for IT sake, right? Like co-pilot for security or co-pilot within Azure, right? As that starts to roll out or co-pilot within the M365 admin center, right? So they will be very specific 
right? Grounded in that content, right? Mm -hmm. um, but as a knowledge worker, right, which we are, um, we kind of, right, we're, we're hybrid workers just like many others, right? We, we do some knowledge work, but then we're focused on, in our case, IT tech. Um, but yeah. the knowledge work, right, that communal learning experience, people want to share the prompts that, that dazzle, right? They're proud of them. Um, and as you get mm -hmm. better, right, and you become more comfortable communicating with Copilot and generative AI in general, yeah. um, it will get better, right? You get better, you want to share it, you share it with, you know, your closest network of people, right? They share it with others. It's very, it's very communal. Um, and it, it's right again, from the top to the bottom, I, I, I don't know if you saw it this morning, but I think, uh, well, I know Jared Spataro, our chief marketing officer, um, for AI here at Microsoft, you know, he posted, uh, not quite three things. It's a three plus one. Um, but he posted a recent, uh, a, a recent Inc magazine survey of over 20 CEOs uh, of fast growing companies. And he highlighted wow. really three areas or four areas, three plus one mm -hmm. uh, around investor relations, performance reviews, procurement paperwork, and legal review. And I myself with my customers have seen that in three of those four areas, right? So uh, performance reviews, procurement paperwork, and legal review. And there are massive massive productivity gains in those three categories. That would be areas for us to cover. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we yeah. could do a three plus one. <laughs> I think so. So, um, you know, we're at two minutes and I know, you know, uh, again, for everybody who wanted to tune in live, I apologize. I think what I'm going to do is immediately go in over the next uh, later today, I, I'm pretty book solid the rest of the day, but um, I will try to get by tomorrow, I'll have uh, redone how we're gonna do these. We'll do them in just teams, we'll simplify it. Um, I'm not really quite sure what, what happened with that. It's showing right now, like there was evidently some kind of drop overload with uh, pushing stuff out and streaming um on the obs front and then because we're going teams to obs to linkedin mm -hmm. so we'll just pull that out we'll pull out the two the middle and end point and bring everybody into teams and i think we can make this a much better session awesome so did you want to share that prompt of the week yeah certainly can um do we want to i can i'm going to share it in chat but i'll share um, the screen yeah, yeah, I'll just share ahead. the screen here since we're a little bit um, we're a little bit technically challenged. Imagine that technical guys technically challenged <laughs> every day of my life. So, so here we go. We've got a prompt of the week. Um, I'm going to present that. Let's go to that page. They're seeing the sauce behind yeah. what we're trying to do. <laughs> They're seeing the tomatoes in the sauce. Uh, so here's a prompt of the week, right? In fact, I chose this one for our initial right debut here because it's pretty simple. But I, everybody I talk to within Microsoft, everyone has Copilot, and every person I know either does this manually, manually, or has this scheduled to run before they start work. Uh, Ooh, for the day. Hey, and talk about that. I have not done this in scheduler. Yeah, so you can you can go in, into scheduler, right? Which, right? What's the tech on the back end of that, Mike? Probably yeah. no, right? Power automate. Power automate, right? So you can <laughs> schedule a prompt. So if you have a prompt that you want to run every day, um, you know, we can you can make it that much easier by scheduling a prompt as, as opposed to just right cutting and pasting that prompt into the to the yeah. uh this chat window but this is one that works it works great for me because i honestly i before i shut down for the day i kind of take a look at my day ahead but this really kind of narrows it down 
gets me focused on what it is I need to be uh, accomplishing for the day. And and I I bet you 90% of, of Microsoft employees, at least here in the U.S., use this prompt. Yeah, I use it every Monday with I just change it from 24 hours to the previous week. Um, and then I ask it for my action items outstanding from the previous week. And it's, <laughs> it's great because I, my, I, you know, I'm like the, I'm the dog squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's like, how do I keep up with all that stuff? And it does a great job, but dude, I had, you know, again, we're all heads down. I never even thought of scheduling. <laughs> so yeah. You got to get, use that scheduler. It works great, Mike. <laughs> that make a good video too. Um, yeah. Cool. Very cool. All right. Well, that's your prompt for the week. So next week, though, for those who are going to be joining us uh, here on Teams Live, we'll have it in Teams and we'll be using the Q&A for taking your questions. Um, we're going to be talking about, do you want to tell them? Yeah, sure thing. So we're going to talk about, uh, next week, we're going to talk about um, really before you crawl. Yes. Um, and before you crawl, right, there's some things you should know. Um, purely really around just kind of rationalizing your data estate, right? Yeah. So in particular, right, we're talking about um, we're talking about the, the M365 tenant data, right? Um, mm -hmm. There's some things that, that um, you know, we, we should look at with regards to that tenant data, right? Um, and, and focus in a little bit on oversharing because quite frankly, we've all done it for years. Um, and so what are some of the things, right, that you can do to kind of rationalize that data state yeah. and get ready for Copilot? Awesome. So until next time, thank you for joining us for Candidly Copilot. I'm Mike. I'm Chad. Have a great day. Take care. And as always, ciao. <laughs>